you can probably think of some people or organizations or whatever that you follow that like automatically make you feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough or oh, I'm not grinding hard enough. I'm not doing these things. And you probably need to go ahead and unfollow those accounts because that's not setting you up for success. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Today's episode is brought to you by Gusto. So when you work for someone else, you really look forward to payday. But when you become a business owner, you really look forward to finding that great payroll provider. And that's where Gusto comes in. Small businesses across the country love running payroll using Gusto. Gusto automatically files and pays your taxes. It's super easy to use and you can add benefits and HR support to help take care of your team and keep your business safe. It's loyal. It's modern. You might even fall in love with it yourself. Side Hustle Pro listeners get three months free when they run their first payroll. So try a demo and test it out yourself at gusto.com slash SHP. That's gusto.com slash SHP. Hey, hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the show. Today in the guest chair is the one and only Dr. Joy Harden Bradford. Dr. Joy is a licensed psychologist, speaker, and the host of the wildly popular mental health podcast, Therapy for Black Girls. She received her bachelor's degree in psychology from Xavier University of Louisiana, her master's degree in vocational rehabilitation counseling from Arkansas State, and her PhD in counseling psychology from the University of Georgia. Dr. Joy's work focuses on making mental health topics more relevant and accessible for Black women. And she specializes in creating spaces for Black women to have fuller and healthier relationships with themselves and others. She's been featured in O, The Oprah Magazine, Bustle, Black Enterprise, Women's Health, Teen Vogue, Essence, and more. This episode is so important to me because I am passionate about breaking the stigma of mental health. Like any other part of our body, we need to take care of our mind. And this year has really cemented that for me. As founders, Sometimes we think that we, what we're experiencing is unique to us. So we go through a lot of internal torment and mental anguish, trying to figure things out on our own. And we don't really know who exactly to talk to because, you know, no one else is walking our specific path. As I talk about with Dr. Joy, though, sometimes I felt like I don't need to speak to anyone. It's not that serious. I can figure it out on my own. I just need a day off, a day of self-care, and it'll all be better. But on today's episode, we get into why you shouldn't wait to reach a breaking point before seeking support, the truth about self-care and why you can't self-care yourself into not going to therapy, what self-sabotage looks like and how to overcome it, and how to thrive as a Black founder. As a reminder, this episode is in no way a substitute for seeking help from a licensed therapist in your state. Before we talk to Dr. Joy, here is a quick shout out to the review of the week. This week's review comes from Kemi. Kemi says, Hi, Nikayla. I just want to let you know that every time I listen to your podcast, I always leave feeling so inspired and motivated. I just listened to your nine month entrepreneur diaries and it couldn't have come at a better time. I am a graphic designer working towards building my brand in art licensing. And this particular episode really lifted me as I took my morning walk. It was lovely to hear your honest take on what it is like to be an entrepreneur and your daily struggles and successes in building a strong business. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed and wondering if I was on the right path but this episode gave me the needed boost to keep surging forward and stay committed to growing my passion. Thank you, Kemi. Thank you, Kemi. You know what? The, as you guys know, the entrepreneurial diaries are so hard for me to do. They take a lot of courage and, you know, from the response that I've been getting, I know that you guys appreciate it and it's actually helpful to you. So that 
tells me that sharing that is the right thing to do and that I'm on the right path. So I will keep them coming once a month. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm so glad that it could help you to push through those feelings of overwhelm. You guys, please, I love reading your reviews. It makes me feel closer to you and it really helps me to understand the kind of impact Side Hustle Pro is having. So please, when you get a chance, just head over to Apple Podcasts, leave me a five star review. I've decided to that. I think I'm going to put a goal on this. So I have a little under 500 reviews right now, and I would love to get to a thousand by the end of the year. These reviews, believe it or not, helps Side Hustle Pro to be discovered in the podcast stores. It helps to, you know, get on Apple's radar and show them that these podcasts, a podcast by a black woman founder is important. It is worthy of being on the charts. And, but beyond that, I just want more people to discover it and more women who are looking for business related topics to discover Side Hustle Pro. And so that is my last plug on that. So thank you guys in advance for your reviews. Now let's get into it. So welcome to the guest chair, Dr. Joy. Thank you so much for having me, Nikayla. Thank you for being here. You know, I'm really excited. And this episode is so important and so meaningful to me. But before we get into why that is, I would love for you to take a chance to just give us a peek into the life of Dr. Joy. Who is she and what does she do? <laughs> so many things. It feels like all of the things sometimes. Um, so I am a psychologist by training. Um, I do have a practice here in Decatur, which is like a small town outside of Atlanta. Um, and I also host the podcast. I'm a mom and a wife. Um, so I feel like often juggling lots of different balls at one time. Yes. And not just any podcast, Therapy for Black Girls, top rated podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> Something, you know. Yes. So what drew you to this path of psychotherapy? Yeah, so I feel like I have always been, um, my mom would, of course, describe it as being nosy all the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I describe it as genuinely curious. Um, so, you know, I feel like I'm just very curious about like humans and I do like a lot of people watching. And I also feel like I'm incredibly intuitive. And so when I kind of looked at what kinds of things really would be a good fit in terms of a major for like who I saw myself as. It felt like psychology was like the perfect fit for me. Um, I initially thought I wanted to do more teaching, but then I did like one practicum in an elementary school and was like, oh no, this is not going to be for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I then went the route of um, getting my master's degree in rehab counseling and then my PhD in counseling psychology. Okay. So did you go straight through for all of these? Um, I went from my undergrad to my master's program after a bit of a hiccup. Um, so I initially applied to like clinical psychology PhD program straight out of undergrad and didn't get accepted to any. Um, and so then I got kind of rerouted to a master's program from somebody Somebody from my undergrad had written this grant and had like all these scholarships to give away. So I was oh. like, oh, I could go to school for free and get a master's degree. Why not? Um, I knew nothing about rehab counseling at the time. But once I looked it up, I was like, oh, this does actually feel like it'd be a great fit for me. Um, so I did two years there in um, Arkansas State is where I did that. And I did two years there and then actually took an internship in Milwaukee mm. before going back to grad school for my Ph.D. So there was about a year of a break. Isn't it funny how life will reroute us, but it ultimately leads us to exactly where we're supposed to be. Did you feel that way? Like, you know, that all these twists and turns in hindsight just all make sense? Oh, yeah. In hindsight, of course, in the moment, it's like, oh, this is not what I was planning. Right. Like, yeah. And I think when you are like a driven student, you know, it doesn't I had not ever been rejected from anything that I had applied for. So I felt like that was also like a huge like blow to my ego uh, at the time because yeah. it was like, oh, I didn't get into this thing. What do you um, mean? But, <laughs> 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 but looking back, definitely it has all kind of wound up being what it, exactly what it needed to be. OK. And so your master's degree is in vocational rehabilitation counseling. What exactly is that? So vocational rehab counseling is basically helping people with disabilities either get back into the the workforce or figure out like accommodations for what they need to need to kind of stay in the workforce. And then counseling psychology is what you do now. Yeah. How did you merge those two interests? 
so I've always had a private practice and I feel like this is kind of like a running joke with therapists because most of us don't ever do just one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Original so, side so, hustlers. So, exactly. Exactly. So I'm like, oh, this is the perfect podcast for me. I've always been side hustling. Um, but my career has been in college counseling centers. So a lot of what I did, even while in grad school, was working with college students while I was also in grad school. And then um, my internship and all of the jobs that I've had ever ever since graduation have been in college counseling centers. Got it. And would you ever decide to go full-time private practice or is there just something about both of those worlds that you love? I loved it. I mean, now I am full-time private practice slash podcast slash all of this other stuff. Um, So I'm not actually in a college counseling center anymore. Um, But it was a really hard decision for me because I really love college students. And so, and there's something about like the life cycle of being on a college campus that's also really inspiring, I think, Mm -hmm. and energizing. Yeah. There's a lot of movement. There's always events. So always like something going on. And so I really miss that kind of, um, you know, energy. Uh, But, you know, once I decided that I needed to do this more full time, then it felt like a decision I had to make. Okay, and thank you for clarifying that. So, you know, I know you are married, you have children. At what stage did you decide, Okay, I'm going full time? And was it a reflection of those changes in your personal life as well? Yeah. So my husband's job actually changed for a second. And so I needed to have a more flexible schedule for the kids. Um, I have two little ones. They're four and two. So that's a lot of like daycare closing and this day off and that day off. And so it just became unbearable to manage. Um, so I decided to leave to to be more flexible for the kids. But it also coincided with um, therapy for black girls just becoming like its own thing that yes. I felt like I really needed to focus on and kind of get some structure around. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to get into that in a minute, yes. but I'm yes. curious too. So it's interesting with, with counseling psychotherapy, it's like, do you market for that, you know, to find clients? Are you doing ads or is it word of mouth? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so a lot of um, what you do in terms of like marketing yourself as a therapist is kind of content marketing in terms of like writing blog posts that speak to your, you know, ideal clients or the podcast or, um, you know, you do videos, that kind of thing. Thing and also making sure, so I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about the directory also, but like in these directory listings that we have as therapists, you also want to be making sure that you're really speaking to who your client is and like how you can help them. Yes. So now let's talk about the podcast. Why did you decide yeah. to start Therapy for Black Girls and why a podcast? Why not just a blog? Yeah. So actually, Therapy for Black Girls started as a blog. So when I started in September 2014, I was just blogging on the site, but I wasn't consistent. It was just like whenever I decided to write, if I felt moved to write something. Um, But a part of the last job that I had, I had an hour commute both ways, which meant that I was listening to a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, I just really fell in love with the medium and really felt connected to like the podcast host that I was listening to. And so I felt like, oh, Oh, this could be something that would be really cool to add to therapy for black girls. And I think, again, when you're listening to podcasts, it sounds like, oh, they're just talking. Like, how hard could this be? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. And now on the Pretty other straightforward, side, right? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on the other side, I realized that it is a ton of work on the back side. Yes. And when you were first getting started, you know, what first steps did you take? And and then when you released it into the world, did it just automatically take off or you kind of had to remind people like, hey, you can listen to this. It's now a podcast. Yeah. So I think in terms of the first steps, um, I think it also became easier for me because my husband has a radio background. um, And so he's my producer. And so I knew the tech piece, what is what I think would have been the barrier for me. Like if I had to figure out how to edit and put all that together, I think it would have taken me a lot longer to get started. But because I knew he was already going to be doing that, then I could just develop like the content and the kinds of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, I also took a course. Um, So there is a psychologist in Philadelphia, Dr. Melvin Voorhees, who has a podcast course specifically for therapists and other helpers um, that talks about like how to get all this stuff set up and how to choose a name and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So I think that was really helpful, too, in in setting the foundation for the podcast. Now, 
let's talk about therapy for Black founders because, <laughs> <laughs> and, and here's where I share why it's been so meaningful for me to listen to your podcast because one of the things that I just underestimated was the mental load of entrepreneurship and how you can have everything lined up. You can have all of the ingredients, but if that mental isn't there and if you are self-sabotaging or filled with anxiety and fear that's holding you back, things are not going to get done. So how can we break through this now? Do you work directly with a lot of entrepreneurs or do you find people are starting to reach out to you more? So my specialty in working with clients is typically um, women who are recovering from breakup. So, yes, yeah, some of them have been like entrepreneurs, but that typically is not the reason why people are coming to me for clinical work. Right. Now, even within your current clientele, so as you deal with with anxiety, procrastination, depression, and those kind of things, what are some of the key issues that you see come up in relation to that? I think for a lot of women, um, well, like I kind of alluded to before, you know, a lot of us are incredibly like driven and used to like doing things well. And I think sometimes when you are in entrepreneurship, there isn't like a roadmap that you're following. And so you don't necessarily know, like, what are you measuring well by? Yes. <laughs> which I, right. And I think that leads to a lot of anxiety because they don't actually know, like, OK, am I doing a good job at this thing? Um, and I also think uh, that a lot of people struggle with this is not a clinical diagnosis, but shiny object syndrome. Right. Because we see people doing all of these different things and it's like, oh, I could do this or I could do that. Yes. And, oh, this would be great to add to my business. And then you stress yourself too thin and you're not doing anything well. Um, right. you know, so I think those are some of the most common things that I see um, working with entrepreneurs. And you know, you bring up such a great point. Because you don't know what to measure yourself by, it's kind of like the two also combine. The shiny object syndrome also relates to you compare yourself to others because that's all you have as a comparison point. You're like, well, such and such has a podcast too, or such and such sells a program like this. And that's not productive <laughs> because no. you are not in their business. You, It's just not a useful exercise. No, and I mean, and, and typically where are you getting that comparison from, right? It's from exactly. whatever we share on social media. And so mm -hmm. you're seeing like all of these highlights, like I talk about all the time, but you don't know any of the process or all of the 58 hours that you don't see on social media that people are not posting. So the comparison is not typically a very real one. And I think, too, the second thing I know I've experienced is you don't always know when you're facing something new, new territory and these new feelings. You don't know where they're coming from. You sometimes don't even know what it is, what name to put on it. So what are some of the symptoms that we should look out for as it relates to anxiety or maybe even depression? Yeah, that's a great question, Nikayla, because I think a lot of people probably are struggling with, with a lot of these symptoms and they don't realize it. So you would want to pay attention to things like changes in your sleep and eating, which I think can be difficult because it's masked by this busy, quote unquote, life that we have as entrepreneurs, yes. right? We're always on the go. We're always on the run. And so it may be harder to pay attention to the fact that like, oh, I go for days without ever really eating three meals or, you know, those kinds of things. So, you know, changes to your appetite, whether you feel less hungry or more hungry. Um, not getting enough sleep, again, could be masked by some of this entrepreneurship lifestyle that we preach sometimes in an unhealthy way, um, because you do actually need to be getting eight or more hours of sleep. Like this burning the candle at both ends is not going to end up in anything but burnout. Um, so changes to your sleep, changes in your mood. So you realize that you may be like maybe a little more irritable than usual. Um, and sometimes depression doesn't always look like sadness. Sometimes it does look like more irritability, which I think is a really reason why sometimes it's missed. Mm, that is really good to know. And how do you know if, let's say you're procrastinating a lot and you know that it's related to some kind of fear, maybe it's an irrational fear and you don't really know if it's of the level where you should seek help? 
So I'm glad you asked that question because that is a perfect myth that we should just go ahead and dispel right now. Oh, really? Yes, okay. yes because the whole idea that if, if it's There's a like a level, bar. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. It's like, okay, if you hit five, now go get help. <laughs> exactly. It would be better for you to go ahead and get help on a one or two level as opposed to getting to the five because if you go in at the one or two level, we may be able to prevent you from actually getting to the five. Um, so the whole mm. idea that you need to be like in a crisis or significantly depressed or anxious or whatever before you actually reach out for help is not true. Like lots of founders, I think, especially as like black women and other women of color, because there is probably not a lot of like maybe entrepreneurs in your family or nobody who you know who has done this thing. We are typically you know, moving in spaces where we don't really have a role model. And so that, of course, brings up a lot of questions and can I really do this and those kinds of things. And so I think particularly for entrepreneurs, it is important to be talking with a therapist, if you can, about some of the the challenges that you're having, because there is no way that personal challenges and things that are happening in your life don't affect your business. I'm so glad you said that because I I did uh, subscribe to that myth. So thank you for dispelling that. You know, I've just been like, oh, I should just practice self-care. Can we talk about self-care, what it is and what it is not? (laughs) Yes, that is such a great point. So I actually spoke with a reporter, um, I think recently, I'm not sure if this piece is out yet, but it should be soon, um, about this whole idea of self-care because you can't like self-care your way into like not going to therapy. Self-care is something that maybe should be a compliment to therapy. But if you actually like need to be working with a therapist because, you know, there's something that's been going on for you, no amount of bubble baths and like days at the spa is going to take care. (laughs) It's just not, it doesn't work that way. You know, so self-care, I think, has kind of become a buzzword and, you know, there's like a lot of glamour and people are trying to sell you all these like kits and things like that. But self-care at its like most generic and foundational basis is like anything that you do to take care of yourself in a way that is restorative. Um, So that means paying attention to how many hours you're sleeping. How long are you spending on social media? Are you taking care of yourself in terms of exercise? Are you eating well? Like all of those kinds of things are what we're really looking at when we're talking about self-care. And speaking of social media, so for those of us who need it for our business, how can we find that balance? Because it's almost like, I feel like it might be doing something to me psychologically and and messing with me in ways that are leading to anxiety and some of these symptoms. However, again, I need it for my business, need to be there and actually enjoy it sometimes. Right. Yeah, I think as with anything, you need to pay attention to like your limits, right? Um, you know, because I think some of us, yeah, a lot of us probably need it for business, but does it de- does it need to be you, right? So something mm. that's helped me is having somebody to help with my social media so that I'm not spending as much time on social media as, you know, I was before. Um, so yeah, can you have a presence but not be on there all the time? And also paying attention to like what kinds of accounts you follow. You know, like you can probably think of some people or organizations or whatever that you follow that like automatically make you feel like, oh, I'm not doing enough or, oh, I'm not grinding hard enough. I'm not doing these things. And you probably need to go ahead and unfollow those accounts because that's not setting you up for success. Amen. I actually did do that the other day. And I do. I'm like, oh, I wonder what they're up to. But I know (laughs) that after a few, you know, times and and, and it does make me feel like, man, I'm not doing enough. So Mm -hmm. I have to take care of myself and protect my energy like that. Right. Hey, guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsor. Okay, I have a side hustle hack for all to hear, and it's called Skillshare. You want to know how I grow as a businesswoman? I keep learning. There's not a week that goes by that I'm not checking out a refresher class or a deep dive tutorial. And my go-to is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 18,000 classes in business, marketing, entrepreneurship, you name it. So whether you're trying to start a side hustle or scale your business, Skillshare is there to keep you learning and thriving. In the last month alone, I've learned how to set up my email capture landing page on Squarespace and how to boost my email marketing using MailChimp, all through Skillshare. And now, Skillshare has a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for just 99 cents. That's right, just 99 cents. 
To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Hustle Pro. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Hustle Pro to start your two months now. Hey, side hustlers. If you have already started your business or are getting ready to, you probably know that small business owners, we wear a lot of hats. And some of those hats are totally fun. But if we're being honest, some of them, like filing taxes and running payroll, for example, they're not so great. That's where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually easy for small businesses. Fast, simple payroll processing, benefits, and expert HR support all in one place. Gusto even automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, they make it easy to add on health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Those old school clunky payroll providers just weren't built for the way we work as modern small businesses, but Gusto is. So let them handle one of your many hats because you have better things to do. Side Hustle Pro listeners get three free months when they run their first payroll. So try a demo and see for yourself at gusto.com slash SHP. That's gusto.com slash SHP. I want to touch on this topic of self-sabotage. You had an episode on this. Tell us more about what does it look like? What do you think causes it and how can we cope and overcome it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that was definitely a very popular episode and it had already been requested. So I knew it would be because people yeah. really wanted me to talk about it. Um, but self-sabotage is all of those things we do to kind of get in our own way and block our blessings, so to speak. Um, you know, so like we talked about, like, you know that like the morning hours are your most productive, but then you will stay up all night binging episodes on Netflix. Um, so so kind of working against what you're saying that you actually want to do. And a lot of times we do this because of like fear of failure or fear of success. So basically, if I don't even try, then I can't even say that I succeeded or I failed because I never even put myself out there. So mm. most of the time it's subconscious, like typically people don't know that they're doing it. But if you kind of get into this pattern of realizing like, oh, I'm not ever, you know, Know, meeting any of these deadlines or these goals that I set for myself or, you know, every time I kind of put myself out there, things just don't work out. You do need to take an assessment of like what kinds of things you're actually doing that could be preventing you from getting these things you say you want. Mm. And now you have created a safe space for people to address, face and find coping mechanisms for some of these, you know, topics that we've discussed. Can you share a little bit more about the larger Therapy for Black Girls community and the resources that you can find there? Yeah, and that is one of my favorite things. And Kayla, like, I really feel like, you know, because like even a year ago, I wasn't necessarily building the business that I'm building now, right? Like Mm -hmm. even when I was planning to at some point, like have a full-time private practice, I was thinking that I would have a full-time private practice, not be running this podcast and doing like (laughs) interviews and all of these things. Like the business looks completely different. And so, you know, it it has kind of thrown me off my game in terms of like, okay, I don't have a script for like what this business looks like. So what has really helped me though, is being really in tune with my community and paying attention to what kinds of things they're talking about, what kinds of things they're asking for, and really building my business around that. So there's a very active Facebook community. There are over 16,000 members in the Thrive Tribe is what we call the um, the community. Um, and we're always having all kinds of conversations about all kinds of things in there. And then on Thursdays, I go live on both Facebook and Instagram at noon for my three for Thursday chats, where I will talk about three pieces of information. And then we just kind of have a general chat. There are over or almost 900 therapists in the directory at this point. So if people are looking for a therapist and not sure like where to get started, then you can definitely visit the directory to to get a place to get started. Um, And we also have a partnership with the um, crisis text line. So people may not be aware of this resource, but if you are having some kind of a crisis, you can actually text with a crisis text counselor um, by texting the word tribe to 741741, which I think is an outstanding resource and it's completely free. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 
And it's interesting you bring that up. So obviously we wanted to touch on therapy for Black founders, but you yourself are a founder of a business and starting this out and learning on the fly um, (laughs) how to create this business. So how are you going about doing this and what lessons do you think you've learned in this first year? Is it just been one year? It hasn't even been a year yet. That uh, I've hasn't been... been a year, right? <laughs> no, January is when wow. I started doing this full time. Yeah. And so it hadn't even been a year. Uh, what has been really helpful for me has been learning from like other successful like business owners and business coaches. Um, because like I said, like I just was not like I had a good idea of how to run a private practice business. I had no idea how to run this business that has become therapy for black girls. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, working with business coaches and being in masterminds has been incredibly helpful for me. What do you look for when you're looking for a coach? Like what, you know, what is your ultimate vision right now? I know that can shift. Yeah, it definitely has. And I've had multiple coaches. Um, so I work with Maya Elias very early on in the game. Ooh, shout out to Maya. <laughs> yes. Maya is like one of the best. Like she is outstanding at helping you like to really capture your branding and like what is your message and like what are you really wanting to talk about? So I cannot recommend her highly enough. Um, and also it has been important to me to work with coaches who are actually also therapists but have expanded their businesses to do these other kinds of things like I'm doing, like podcasts and courses and stuff. Um, so I worked with Allison Salmon Pereer and Tiffany. She just goes by HeyTiffany.com. But um, they are both two therapists who like have incredibly successful practices, but also have expanded to do these other kinds of things. So I did a mastermind with them that was really helpful um, in getting the directory started. And is it hard for you to separate or is it hard for people to separate Dr. Joy's private practice and therapy for Black girls? Well, I think a lot of people don't even know that I have the private practice. And I mean, it, it definitely is very small because the podcast and all of the other stuff like takes up a lot more of my time. So the practice Mm -hmm. is small purposely. Um, But I think people sometimes don't even know that I actually do work in in practice. (laughs) Right, right, (laughs) right. Like I don't just play a therapist on the podcast. I do actually actually have a practice. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Are you okay with us talking a a bit about monetization in terms of You know, we're both podcasters and we both, you know, have similar business models in that respect. And as you think about therapy for black girls, one, I'm curious, has it been tricky for you because of the element of therapy and the fact that it's a medical business and, you know, there have to be certain things that you're careful about? Has it been difficult to figure out how you want to monetize? Yes, it definitely has. I mean, and because, you know, so people may not know this or maybe you do, but um, we're licensed as psychologists in our respective states. And so there are a lot of like ethical guidelines and things that you need to do to make sure you can actually keep your license in good standing. And so because... Again, I feel like I had that down pack for the private practice. But once I started getting into this podcasting and like talking to people across the world kind of thing, that became a little more of a gray area. And I definitely have struggled. Like I've been approached by like different sponsors and kinds of things, but it doesn't always feel like it's the best fit in terms of who I am and the fact that I have a license to protect. Like, I feel like I don't want to just have sponsorship from anybody who doesn't feel right. like a good fit for my audience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely understand. And that, and that's why, you know, it's been a limited range for me because I really need to be able to vouch for that. And also it's host read. So even if I don't say, oh, I've used this and love it, it's automatically seen as something that I'm vouching for. So you have to be so careful. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, because I do have the license, like people need to always make sure that, you know, like they sometimes describe me as like their therapist in their head kind of thing. And and I just need to make sure that people understand that I'm not really their therapist. Exactly. You know, that I'm giving you education and like maybe talking points for you to talk with your own Mm -hmm. therapist about, but like, you know, making sure that that line is very clear. Yes. And, you know, again, I'm just so inspired and, and proud of what you've created in creating this safe space for us to talk about topics that some would think were taboo, were once taboo, and we're all still fighting through, right? Because no one wants to feel like they're not normal, even though 
I don't know who made normalcy like the thing to be. Why is <laughs> why is that the thing to be? But anyway, right. we everyone wants to feel like they're quote unquote normal, but we're so nuanced. We're different. We have different experiences in life. Of course, we're going to have different issues and things that we need to work through. So speaking of that, because you need to see someone that's licensed in your state. Can you talk about how people can find resources and what they should look for in finding someone to talk to? For example, what's the difference between a psychologist and a psychotherapist, for example? Yeah, so a psychotherapist is kind of like a generic term. So sometimes people will call themselves like therapists or a psychotherapist or whatever. Um, But a psychologist is typically a PhD level clinician who is licensed by their states. Um, But you also have licensed clinical social workers, licensed professional counselors, licensed marriage and family therapists, um, a host of different kinds of professionals who still have training in doing therapy and are licensed by their respective states. So that definitely is what you do want to look for is somebody who is licensed, Um, you know, because you do want to be careful with people who, you know, are advertising themselves as like emotional healers or, you know, that kind of thing. Like, and Mm -hmm. if that's what you're looking for, then fine, but that's not a therapist. And so, you know, the the people who can call themselves therapists are actually going to be licensed by their states. And your directory provides some assistance with that? Yeah, the only people who are listed in the directory are licensed therapists. Got it. And what's your feeling on nowadays? A lot of people are interested in remote therapy or being able to access someone via text or over the phone and not necessarily go in person. Mm -hmm. Um, Is that something you think is as effective? Yeah, it it definitely can be. I mean, you know, because a lot of times there are barriers to actually getting into the office, like in Atlanta, like our traffic is awful. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, even if you plan to try to be on time for your session, like you just might not because of a random accident. And so... Uh, virtual therapy has like allowed people to like be more flexible in terms of their schedules. And for a lot of people, it can be as just as effective as in-person therapy. Um, Now, it it definitely is not the best fit for everybody, but for a lot of people, it actually could be a very good fit. Um, So for the people who live in areas like maybe they're looking for a black therapist, but um, they're not in an area where lots of black therapists are licensed. We, like I said, are licensed by our state. So you can work with anybody who is licensed in your entire entire state if they offer virtual sessions as an option. All right. And now you've offered so many gems, but before we get into the lightning round, I'd love to know just overall as founders, as people who are navigating side hustles, career and life, what are some general tips for us to work through anxiety and procrastination and to stop self-sabotaging and just be our best selves? Yeah, I really think having a sounding board is helpful. So, you know, we'll let you in on a little secret. Nikayla and I and a couple of other podcasters have our own like little mastermind and like our pop in in WhatsApp (laughs) chat. Um, And that to me has been incredibly helpful because like if I'm feeling unsure about something or if somebody else is like, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about this. What do y'all think? Then we can bounce ideas off one another. And I think that really helps to just get out of your head because that's a lot of what anxiety is, is just like sometimes overthinking and like playing this what if game what if what if what if I did this and what and if you actually talk to somebody about it they can hold up a mirror to you and say hey you said this but then last week you said this and let's talk about what's really going on here so Mm -hmm. I think it helps to keep you accountable but also helps to kind of rein in some of that overthinking so finding yourself like a group of other people who are in similar space as you um, I think can be really helpful to, to to manage some of that anxiety and procrastination Um, Also making sure that you are setting yourself up with realistic expectations. Um, You know, I think a lot of times because we maybe don't have access to other people who are doing the kinds of things we're doing, we're not really setting realistic goals for ourselves. And then (laughs) then they don't happen. I'm guilty of this. (laughs) And then just... uh, Just complete devastation. Exactly. When it's like, girl, you were setting yourself up for failure from the beginning. Like, what were you thinking? You know, so I I just knew I was going to be a millionaire this year. I was like, what do you mean? 
seven figure year. Um, and again, right, you see a lot of people on social media talking about that. So I think there's some hype around it, you know, but again, mm -hmm. how realistic is that? You know, like, do you really have a solid plan in place for how you would reach that thing? So just as important, I think, as it is to find people who are like in a similar space as you, I think it is important if you can identify like mentors or pay a, con a consultant or somebody to help you set like realistic goals and expectations for your business. I think that that could be really helpful too. I love that. And you are so right. Everything you have said has just been hitting home. So I'm so glad that we are speaking. And especially, you know, what you said before about not waiting until you're like, oh, OK, I'm in a crisis now to see someone. <laughs> right. um, because, again, that's totally what I've always felt like. Like, I'm OK. I'm I'm just a little, you know, so thank you. We often hear founders need to make sure they have a good CPA and a good lawyer on their team. There's mm -hmm. also nothing wrong with adding an incredible therapist to your team. You know, yes. somebody who is making sure that you are taking care of yourself so that you can take care of the business. Right. Because it all starts with you. You know, why wouldn't you literally take care of the head of the business? Exactly. You know, you are the head. So all good reminders and things for us to keep in mind. So now let's head into the lightning round, Dr. Joy. Okay. You just answer the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So what is a resource that has helped you in your business that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? Trello has been incredible for me and my team um, because I feel like I always have like so many different ideas and so do they. And so having a place where we can all see what's going on has been like a game changer for us. And number two, what's been the best business book or podcast episode that you've consumed this year? So Raina from Dreams and Drive, um, who's another member of our my, a mastermind, yes. did a recent <laughs> episode about like, I don't even know how many tips, maybe 18 marketing tips. And I felt like I was getting like a mini MBA in marketing listening to this podcast. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is such incredible information. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Raina. Yeah, shout out to Raina. Yeah, so that probably has been one of the most impactful episodes I've heard in a while. Number three, who is a Black woman entrepreneur that you would want to trade places with for a day and why? Lena Waithe, because it feels like she is always doing something new and incredible. And I'm just like the creativity in this woman, like just knows no ends. <laughs> right. Yeah, so <laughs> definitely Lena. Number four, what is a personal habit that has helped you significantly in your business? I would say my intuition. Ooh. And then finally, what is your parting advice for fellow women entrepreneurs who want to be their own boss but are worried about losing a steady paycheck? I would encourage them to do some reality testing to see if the worry is actually about the paycheck or if it's about something else. Ooh. Yeah, do a little digging. I mean, because I understand like bills have to be paid. We got to take care of ourselves. But a lot of times we use the money as like an excuse to not actually step out and do what we really want to be doing. Dr. Joy, I'm going to throw my phone against this wall. <laughs> You are so right. You are so right. I love that advice because before I was about to quit everything, it wasn't about the money. It was about other people. What are other people going to think? All this other stuff. Um, so y'all let that one marinate. And really, really, I like that. I'm going to do that exercise with every decision, really. <laughs> yes, exactly. So what's the best way for people to connect with Dr. Joy and her resources after this episode? You can find all of the ways to contact me and connect at therapyforblackgirls.com. All right. So Dr. Joy, thank you so, so much for being in the guest chair today. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, Nikayla. All right, guys. And there you have it. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community. Go to sidehustlepro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.